it's still rocking after all these years. This is the story of my rock and roll butler. This is it, the show that started it all. Often imitated, but never equal. From San Francisco, USA, online since 2004, it's the one and only rock and roll geek show. With the original rock and roll geek, Michael Butler. Welcome to the Rock and Roll Geek Show. My name is Michael Butler. Thanks a lot for joining me. I really appreciate it. Today is Sunday, August 9th, 2020, and it's 1.24 p.m. when I'm recording this episode. It's day seven of the Dog Days of Podcasting, where me and a bunch of other super, super nerds <laughs> attempt to do a show a day for the entire month of August. So on Friday, uh, I rented the Cream documentary it's called cream america's only rock and roll magazine i heard an interview with i didn't know it was coming out but i heard an interview i was listening to dave left set's podcast and he had this woman jan yuhelski who was the uh one of the original writers of cream magazine she was on and that's when i found out it was coming out august 7th and then of course i found out it did trunk interviewed her too and that uh, and several other people interviewed her i would have tried to get her on the show but since all those people had her on, I don't need to. So, uh, yeah, it's not worth trying. After another, a bunch of podcasters do it, I kind of don't want to. I kind of like to be the only one who talks to people. Anyway, not that she would have come on anyway. She, I might be too small time for her, but pardon me. I'm burping up the first Tecate of the day at 1.26 p.m. I usually wait until after 12 to drink beer, and it's Sunday after 12. I'm cooking... Right now, I'm making a, uh, I'm making a tonkatsu broth for ramen noodles tonight. I got a bunch of. I had to clear out my freezer. I'll, I'll get to the cream documentary in a second, but I'm clear. I had to clear out my freezer because the wife wanted me to empty out. You know, get rid of everything that's in the garage. And one of the things was this big um, uh, chest freezer. Boy, I hated getting rid of that thing because it was full of meat and stuff. And I had to, to take some of the stuff down up to the mountain house. And some of the stuff had to get moved into the regular freezer, which is just a regular refrigerator or freezer. And one of the things was a bunch of pork bones that had been sitting there for a while. So I think I've got to get rid of these things. So I decided to make a uh, pork broth. And what am I going to do with all this pork broth? There's still no room in my freezer. So if I make the broth, I have to put it in the freezer anyway. So I said, why don't I... Uh, make something with the pork broth and I can't think of anything better to make with it than ramen soup so I have some um, I rolled a pork belly up and seared that and I braised that for an hour and for two hours in soy sauce sake and sugar and green onions and ginger so that the so it's going to be a ramen noodle soup Tonkatsu ramen, the broth has been going since about 8 o'clock this morning. It's still cooking now, and it is so thick and white and luscious looking. I'm going to strain all the bones and vegetables out of that. I, I roasted the bones and roasted some celery and roasted some carrots and some onions, and I put all those in the pot, a little bit of chicken feet too. I put all those in the pot and some water, and it's been going since 8 a.m. this morning, and uh, it is going to be good. I got some some uh, soft boiled eggs marinating in soy sauce right now. I'm going to put some corn, some, um, some Napa cabbage, some spinach and some bean sprouts and the cha and the uh, chashu, which is pork belly, braised pork belly. Mm, it's going to be a good dinner. Anyway, back to the cream documentary. So I, I paid the nine ninety five. It's on, you go to like cream, just Google cream documentary. I'll put a link on rock and roll geek show notes, rock and geek.com where you can, um, rent this movie. I, I had it for 72 hours. I probably still could watch it again if I wanted to. And I may, this was originally a Kickstarter project. I remember seeing the, um, the Kickstarter emails uh, you know to to fund the cream documentary that was about four or five years ago i think let me take a sip of this fine tecate ah and billy saw the movie billy rose saw the movie last year maybe about a year ago 
and he said it was a a, a, a test screening. So he, he said it was good, and but I guess they pulled the test screening because it didn't come out. I think it showed at a few film festivals, but um, I really enjoyed the movie. So it, here's some things. Well, he, here's all the people that are in it that I can remember. I'm trying to read my notes here. Uh, Dave Dave Marsh was the um, was the got was the editor. Wayne Kramer was in it. Cameron Crowe was in it. Uh, Jeff Ament from Pearl Jam, Chad Smith from Red Hot Chili Peppers was in it, Susie Quattro, Ted Nugent, one of the first scenes was talking about Cream Magazine, and he had nice things to say about it. Peter Wolf is in it, of Jay Giles Band, Black Keys, somebody from Black Keys, Jeff Daniels, the actor, is talking about it, Michael Stipe from R.E.M., Scott Kempner from The Dictators, and I talked to a handsome dick Manitoba this morning, he called me. Dick, handsome Dick Manitoba had a, a hip replacement. He called me out of the blue this morning just to see how it was, how it was going, and I was, you know, asked him how his, his hip was. The surgery was a success, but he had a hip replacement. I told him that Scott Kempner was in the in the movie, and uh, so he got a, kind of a kick out of that. Lenny Kay is in it. Alice Cooper is in it. Don Was is in it. Mitch Ryder from the Detroit Wheels is in it. Toby Mammis, Alice Cooper's manager, is in it. Robert Crisco from um, the Crisco's Consumer Guide is in it. B.B. Buell is in it. Michael Day Barr is in it. Kirk Hammett from Metallica is in it. Thurston Moore from uh, Sonic Youth is in it. Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley from Kiss are both in it. John Holstrom from Punk Magazine is in it. James Williamson from The Stooges. Keith Morris of The Circle Jerks, who, by the way, when he's talking, he's standing in front of a, lo- a framed Love It to Death poster from Alice Cooper. Uh, Legs McNeil from Punk Magazine is in uh, the guy who wrote um, um, "Please Kill Me." Shepard Ferry is in it. Those are just some of the people. Here's some things I found out. Um, Cream. One of the guys that uh, the original writers from the magazine uh, was a big Cream fan. You know, the band Cream, Eric Clapton and Cream, and. Uh, they named the magazine Cream after the band Cream. They changed the spelling. They did it as kind of a fuck you to Rolling Stone magazine because Rolling Stone was named after the Rolling Stones, et cetera, et cetera. Jan Uhelski said that on the, she was, uh, did a lot, of, a lot of the voiceovers. Here's some notes I have here. Uh, it was originally upstairs from a head shop named Mix Media. The guy who owned the head shop... Uh, was Barry Kramer. I believe that's what... I could be wrong on that, but I think they said Barry Kramer was the owner of the head shop, and uh, he decided to take over the magazine, and Robert Crumb um, came into the place, and um, they found out... he, You know, famous cartoonist Robert Crumb, they found out he needed... Um, some kind of medical procedure and they made a deal with him hey if you make us some sort of a cartoon logo for the magazine we will help you raise the funds for your medical procedure so that's how they got the boy howdy uh, logo um let's see they show a photo oh in the movie they they you know there's a lot of um images floating across the screen, you know, like the Ken Burns effect. One of the food photos, which was interesting to me because Ted Nugent, uh, when I asked him about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, he trashed Patti Smith. He said, I'm not going to be in until Patti Smith is out of there, until these people are out of there. Well, in the movie, there's a picture of Patti Smith and Ted Nugent deep in conversation. Ted looks like he's like um, listening intently to what she's saying, and she's looking at him, and they're they're having, look like they're having a good conversation. So I thought that was interesting. The address of the original um, location was thirty seven twenty nine Cass Avenue, Detroit, Michigan, and it was in like a bad section of town, and there was prostitutes and everything. Uh, some artists would um, one guy from Mitch Ryder's band, I think, uh, came on and said that at night you would just see prostitutes walking around out in front of the place all the time. Take us another sip of this fine Tecate. Ah, Lester Bangs comes into the picture. This was several years after Cream had started. Lester Bangs and Jan, and Jan Yehelski came on at the same day. He gets there and... Um, once he starts writing for the magazine, because it was more of a serious and slash political bent um, music magazine. But once Lester Bang gets there, the magazine takes more of a turn into a sarcastic sense of humor. And that's when I was way into the magazine. Cream Magazine, when I was a kid in 
11th and 12th grade, you know how kids nowadays have these things called peaches. They're like little notebooks where they put all their stuff. Well, my peaches were Cream Magazine and Circus Magazine. Those things, those two magazines were everything to me. They were my life. I just did nothing but read Cream and Circus from cover to cover. Mostly Cream. Cream was a lot better of a magazine. Circus came out weekly. Um, so they were a little bit more timely, but they were more seriously written and and obviously not as well written. Cream had a more of a sarcastic um, bent to their articles. And the best thing about Cream to me was the captions. And I found out in the magazine that Jen, or in the movie, Jan Uhelski said she wrote most of the captions. And the captions were extremely sarcastic and extremely um, humorous. They, they always said something that didn't pertain to... You know, like, for instance, if you saw Ted Nugent talking to Patti Smith, you would see under the caption something like, will you come sleep with me? Or something really sarcastic that would either be putting down Patti Smith or Ted Nugent. Real sarcastic sense of humor. Another thing, let's see. Um, he, I can't read my writing. Uh, something wrote that B.B. Buell would, would to the world. Oh, oh, Yes. Lester Bangs wrote an article about B.B. Buell when she was pregnant with Liv Tyler. You know, um, Steven Tyler got her pregnant and Todd Rundgren raised her. But uh, when she was pregnant, Lester Bang wrote that B.B. Buell would do the world a huge favor if she would just have an abortion. <laughs> and B.B. Buell's in the magazine. She doesn't, apparently she didn't see when she didn't see that. But she had good things to say about the magazine. Also, I think this was in taken was put into um, the Almost Famous movie. He told Cameron Crowe, don't make fun with rock stars because it'll kill your writing voice. He said, the rock stars are not your friends. Even though he was kind of a groupie himself, he was a huge fan of, of, of um, Lou Reed. And once in the movie, Jay Giles Band invited, invited, um, be, invited, why am I losing my train of thought? Lester Bangs. He and they invited Lester Bangs to uh, review the show, but they offered him to sit on stage and type up the review while they're on stage playing. So while the, while Jay Giles Band is on stage playing, probably in Detroit, he, in the middle of the stage is Lester Bangs sitting at a desk with a typewriter, typing up the review. And at the end of the show, Ted um, Lester Bangs gets up and like a rock star smashes the typewriter on the stage, which was a kind of a cool scene from the movie. They eventually move to the country from Detroit and they all, everybody who writes for the magazine moves to this country house by with you know, to all live together. So it kind of becomes like a commune did not know that. Uh, they talk about the cream profiles, which is the boy howdy, you know um, they had these, if, if you know Cream Magazine, you know what I'm talking about. They would have Cream Profiles, which was tape, which was a ripoff from the Doers Profile. You know, Doers, uh, whatever the alcohol was. Uh, and they would use, they had Boy Howdy Beer, which was a, a Budweiser can with a Boy Howdy uh, sticker on it. And I found, I, they talked about that. And they showed a whole bunch of different Cream Boy Howdy Profiles. Uh, Angus Young, uh Kiss, Jay Giles Band, bunch of people doing Cream Boy Howdy Profile. Stars, Cars, they talk about that. And they show a picture of Joe Perry in doing the car. You know, they Stars, Cars were artists posing in front of cars. They had a picture of Ted Nugent in front of his Ford Bronco and another car. And Joe Perry was in front of a, was sitting in a car that he totaled drunk driving, which was kind of cool. Pulling up my notes here. Dave Marsh and Lester Bangs did not get along. They both loved the magazine, and they fought constantly. They even had fist fights. Lester wanted the band, to, the magazine, to be like a band of bozos. Dave wanted it to be more political. They and they would even get, disagree so much they had fist fights. Uh, Barry's wife got tired of, so they moved. Oh, Barry's wife got tired of um, of the living in the commune so she talked talked uh the band talked the magazine into moving the headquarters to birmingham um birmingham michigan 
finally they had a real office instead of living in a commune. Uh, that's where Chad, Bur- Chad, Chad Smith talked about riding his bike up to the Birmingham office. And when he got to the, to the cream offices, he sees Alice Cooper coming out of the building, which reminds me of the time when we rode our bicycles to the magazine when Van Halen was uh, doing an interview and their limos were outside and they were full of uh, Schlitz malt liquor cans. That was the Van Halen 2 tour. Uh, let's see. That was when rock stars started coming into the offices. Alice Cooper showed up a lot of times. Uh, Mitch Ryder, Detroit Wheels played in. No, no, that was uh, previously that the, the first one. But lots of bands came in. Um, uh, Iggy Pop came into the office, um, and and Dave Marsh threw a, put uh, put a uh, garbage can over his head. Either Dave Marsh or or Barry Kramer. Anyway, all these rock stars from the 70s, when they would come to Detroit, they would make a special trip to Birmingham to just to see the cream offices. Uh, they talk about the letters to the editor. And one of the writers trashed the runaways, said these bitches suck or something like that. And Joan Jett was in the movie. She wrote, she actually wrote a letter to Cream. Uh, and she read the letter that she wrote to Cream magazine in this movie. Uh, Jan Uhelski talks about being the only p- person to ever get on stage with Kiss. She got, she, they put on Kiss makeup on her and they gave her a guitar and she performed rock and roll all night with them. That's a famous story. Uh, Keith Morris, I, t- I said Keith Morris in front of the Love It to Death poster. Dave Marsh leaves the magazine to go to New York City. He, and then he eventually gets a job for the enemy Rolling Stone magazine. Lester bangs butts heads with Barry Kramer so much that he wanted out of the magazine and he would do everything to try to get fired. Once he also, once he, um, oh, this is about when drugs starting into the picture. Barry Kramer was a big cokehead. Um, uh, Lester Banks did every kind of drugs that they could, that they would give him. Once Lester had a house, had a huge party in the, in the offices of Cream Magazine and charged up a $12,000 bill to the magazine. That's what got him fired. And, from there, he moved to New York City, where he later died. And um, when I was talking to Handsome Dick Manitoba today, he said he was real good friends with with um, with Lenny K, or Lenny K, Lenny Bruce. Part. Wait, wait a minute. Oh, what am I talking about? Lester Bangs. He was really good friends with Lester Bangs. I think he was good friends with uh, Lenny K too. Take another sip of this fine Tecate. Butler, slow down. Take a sip. Ah, try to read your chicken scratch. Barry Kramer gets heavily into coke. His wife is, uh, leaves him for that. He dies at age 37 from huffing nitrous oxide. And Barry Kramer's son, J.J. Kramer, I think is his name, is the guy who actually uh, got the funds to make this movie. Robert Matthew was one of the people who also contribu- had something to do with making the movie, too. Robert Matthew was friends with Billy Rowe, and um, he, I think he did that, um, I could be wrong on this, but I think he did that that uh, New York Dolls album cover of them sitting on the couch, and he took a picture of American Heartbreak in that exact same pose. So, J.J. Kramer inherits the magazine, which and it was way in debt. They ended up selling the magazine for seventy thousand dollars to be, and they moved to to L.A. Because and after the after it becomes like cream metal, and uh, after they sold it, it became cream metal, and it became the magazine lost it once they sold it. Seventy five thousand dollars. That's a pretty good deal they got. Lester Bangs OD'd in 1982, and the magazine disbanded in 1989. I think that's all I have here about cream magazine it was i highly recommend the movie if you're a fan of rock history and if you read cream when you were a kid it's pretty much a must see because it brings back memories there's lots of music well most of the music in the magazine is act or in the movie is actually uh iggy and the stooges so i guess that's what they could get the rights for there's some, a lot of mc5 footage Wayne Kramer is doing a lot of the talking in it and the footage of the mc5 man those guys rocked out on stage wayne kramer looked really cool on stage and there's lots of good footage of them 
Highly recommended. If you're a fan of rock history and a fan of Cream Magazine, watch it. It's $9.99. Well worth the money. I enjoyed it. I would have paid $20 in the movie theater for it. Instead, I sat in my room, drank beer, and watched it. Instead of sneaking beer into the movie theater and watching it, I just sat there with my dog, Kazman, Cassie, and we watched the Cream documentary. Cream, America's only rock and roll magazine. I will post a link to where you can watch it at rockandrollgeek.com. Highly recommended. A big plus one. All right. Thank you for listening to this, friends. It's day seven of the Dog Days of Podcasting. Might as well close out with something from around the time of Cream Magazine. Like I said, that magazine and, and circus was everything to me. All my homework and stuff were stuffed in Cream Magazines. I used to bring them and pass them around to my friends. We would all read them cover to cover. We would clean out our weed, you know, de-seed our weed. And when we weren't doing it in album covers, we'd do it in Cream and Circus Magazine. I didn't know any of the people who wrote for the magazine except for Lester Bangs. Uh, but now I do. They interviewed everybody who's, now, who's still alive from the magazine. And it's a good piece of musical history. And I am a fan of rock history. All right, let's close out with something from around that time. How about Alice Cooper from Killer? under my wheels thank you for listening friends please keep the donations coming got a new uh new a new patreon donor uh as of yesterday where is who was it now uh who was it I, let me see if i can pull it mark Mez, mark mazel i think i thanked him yesterday cole thornton also and uh a new donor which i can't find <laughs> I will thank the new donor on uh, the next episode. I'm, thank you, new donor. I sent him a, uh, a thank you for donating as well. I'll remember his name as soon as I stop recording this episode. Thank you for listening, friends. Please keep the donations coming. Rockandrollgeek.com. Send me an email with your show reviews from the past. I got another one from somebody today. Please send more. Rockandrollgeek at gmail.com. Find me on the Facebook r and Geek. Find me on the Instagram Rockandrollgeek. Don't ask. Find me on the Twitter r and Geek. I'll talk to you tomorrow, friends. Oh, shit. As you can see, I still haven't fired this producer. I think today's the day. I'm going to have to let this fucking guy go. All right. Thank you for listening, friends.
It's a rock and roll geek train wreck. <laughs> 